Hi guys, this is Zen Sams back here at Max Public House in Staten Island holding the fort down for the very famous John Tobacco who happens to be in Capitol Hill bringing it to you directly from there. We just had him on. He broke it down for me. He, he let our viewers know and all of you on Facebook on what needs to happen for Trump to win. It's a long shot, but JT has his facts straight and he thinks that Pence is going to bring it home. I'm not so sure. I'm hoping. Uh, we do know that Republican Kelly Loeffler lost, uh, and that was, of course, inevitable. We had Raphael, who was a native to Georgia, a pastor. People love him. What were they thinking? Of course she was going to lose. Separate of that, the race that doesn't make sense to me is how did... John Ossoff win. How did that even transpire? And that, my friends, is where I feel that a certain level of voter fraud, perhaps, took place. We have yet to see. Now, there's about 150 Congress people that are going to challenge all of the about all of the above and here to help us make sense of more than what i can offer you is jt who's piping back in from capitol hill here we go jt are you there hey how are you all right i'm good i'm just going to put my mic on because i've lost you but go ahead i can hear you in the background i you hear me i do hear you go ahead okay great so hello everyone yeah uh, uh, uh apparently um I'm talking to Roger Stone and his head of security, Sal, over at the Capitol. They're saying that this maniac, Alex Jones, tried to uh, lead a, a charge on the Capitol. They're trying to break into the Capitol. And apparently there's now a bomb threat, what? they're saying. That's what they just said. There's a bomb threat at the Capitol. Um Guys, this so is I'm, JT I'm, I'm, bringing it to you straight from Capitol Hill. Yeah, no, yeah, I'm giving threat. it to you as I get it. This is what this is what I just heard from Sal that uh, they they're um, they're no there's a bomb threat at the Capitol because there's supposed to be another rally. Roger Stone, George Papadopoulos, I'm supposed to go over there and speak at it, and they just said they may not let it go off now because of a bomb threat. Um, Crazy stuff happening. Now, Ted Cruz is on there making a case to the Senate. Mitch McConnell just came on and started throwing water all over the challenges, saying this is not what we want to do and all this other stuff. Um, I'm not happy with, with, this, uh, with this McConnell guy. I mean, this guy's the swamp of all swamps, Zen. Well, he's a sellout. You know, he's a sellout. So he, 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 he basically, you know, got the jitters, the heebie-jeebies that this was not going to work out for him. He's no longer the majority leader. It is what it is. Chuck Schumer, you know, got what he wanted. It happened. It played out exactly the way the Democrats wanted. And we let it happen because we knew that on November 3rd, there, was, there were irregularities. We knew this. So for this to play out again in a mirror image, Weeks later is mind-boggling that we were not there to mitigate any of this. We weren't. The Republicans just were not there. And I don't want to, to, to be a backseat driver here, John, but honestly, of course there was a level of voter fraud. And now it's if and when it can be proven. But Mitch, him, he's the biggest sellout of all. Well, you know, Mitch McConnell, if you ask me, he just gave his resignation speech from the Senate. Um, he basically threw in the towel on Trump. So if if Trump does wind up turning the tables, we got to get rid of this old swampy, slimy creature, Mitch McConnell, who just gave an impassioned plea on why we should step down and accept the results of a fraudulent election. So win or lose, his career is over. His career is over. Um, and now um, I really like what the Republicans are doing because they're going to make every single one of the Republicans and the Democrats – put themselves on the record and say that they agree with a fraudulent election. So, you know, Zen, this could lead to a real breakup in the Republican Party. And this could lead to, you know, a whole bunch of people deciding they don't want to be a Democrat or a Republican. And I've been saying for a long time, probably what we need in this country is a, is a third party we that do. represents the middle of our country. We do. That uh, these other two parties don't want us to think about. No, absolutely. I'm no longer confident. John, as a mom, as a New Yorker, uh, uh, as an actor, as a, as a media contributor, as a personality, I just feel like the carpet has been 
pulled right underneath from me. There's nothing that I feel that, that I'm in control of anymore with respect to where my allegiance is because honestly, I, I, I need a third party. I need that party. I need to feel like I believe in leadership again. I need to feel like there's truth, there's a silver lining. It's never going to happen with the current administration, well, not the current, but cur the administration to be uh, the, uh, the Kamala and Bidens of the world. That's never going to transpire. But more importantly, when Trump leaves office, I am fearful and the Senate being controlled by the liberal left is extremely troublesome. We need intervention and fast. Um, Zen, I'm noticing your outfit today. I wasn't able to see you a little earlier, but you look fantastic. And I feel like I saw that outfit before last year um, when we took a picture together at my birthday party. You know what? You're right. And that's the picture that I, I sent me of that. It, it was an outfit that came with sleeves. I took the sleeves off today, but the, but last year it had the sleeves on. And yes, you're right. And you're wearing the exact same outfit you were wearing. Yeah. Look it's at that. like Groundhog's Day. It's like Groundhog's you know? Day. Yeah. Well, maybe tomorrow <laughs> well, maybe tomorrow we'll do another in-studio set. You're gonna, are you back tomorrow or are you still there? I'm going to be back tomorrow. And if we're going to make movie references... A little more pertinent than Groundhog's Day would be Beauty and the Beast. Oh, Maybe. stop it. I will be here, and there is no Beauty and the Beast. I love it. It's Groundhog's Day. We'll keep it at that. JT, thank you for, for piping in from Capitol Hill and giving us the energy that we need, because right now it's it feels like it would have been a very somber day for the average Republican here, especially in the tri-state area. Not yet. But not yet. Let's not go to somber. The, right. It ain't over till the fat lady sings, and I want you to bring it to us, uh, especially tomorrow when we're, when we're in studio, and I want to see the behind well, the, I'll have behind more the you scenes. tomorrow. <laughs> I want to see your behind by the, the looks scenes. of things. By the looks of things, we don't have a fat lady on set to start singing yet, so oh. we're in good shape for today. No, <laughs> not you. You're a rail. All right. Hey. All right. Well, I'm here. There's a big party going down. Um, there's supposed to be some more rallies. Anything major comes up, I'll check back in with all you guys and go live a little later on. But otherwise, I'll be in studio tomorrow with Zen. Now thank guys, you, Zen. Thank you so today. much for tuning in and sharing the Facebook feed. This is Zen Sam's live from Max Pavel Cousins, Staten Island, Liquid Lunch, and JT bringing it to you from Capitol Hill. Thank you for tuning in.